I'm just going to dive right in since I've been introduced. Uh, about three years, three years ago, I gave a talk on uh, the issues of uh, post-quantum uh, crypto. So today, I'm talking, going to be talking about the NIST um, uh, contest or, uh, uh, for determining, standardizing uh, post-quantum crypto algorithms to be able to be used in our, our systems. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to do a quick review over uh, some of the stuff I talked about three years ago, just to put us in, in the level set. Then we're going to talk about the specifics of the NIST uh, uh, contest, what NIST is looking for, what, um, uh, yeah, what kind of algorithms they got, etc. I'll do a quick review of some of the uh, major, uh, four major post-quantum uh, systems that we uh, that I discussed three years ago. It'll be a very uh, rough, quick overview. And then we'll look at some of the unique algorithms, some of the algorithms that don't fall into those uh, categories. And then we'll talk about some con uh, conclusions. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go into the math behind any of these systems. And we're not going to do any deep dives other than some of the uh, unique algorithms on how these algorithms work. The uh, first thing, post-quantum computers are coming. IBM uh, last month an, uh, announced the commercial availability of their uh, um, quantum computer. They've actually had it available for over a year uh, for researchers. Um, it's a 20-bit, uh, so we're not like worried about breaking anything with it. But the fact that I'm talking to you about a real machine that does 20 bits of, of uh, uh, quantum uh, uh, is something that I couldn't say three years ago when I gave this talk. So they're coming, they're, 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 it's moving faster. Um, it's not now uh, looking like not, uh, when, not if, but when we're going to have quantum computers. Quantum computers allow uh, us to be able to, to solve some problems that we can't solve uh, quickly in classical computers due to certain kinds of uh, parallelization. Not every uh, hard problem can be solved uh, with quantum computers. Unfortunately, some of the ones that can are all of our existing public key systems. So RSA, DH, DSA, EC, all, all toast once you have quantum computers. Um, there are some algorithms for finding, for doing general solutions. You have a, uh, a single answer to a problem uh, and you can check that single answer. If you can do that, you can find that answer with a quantum computer in square root two time rather than the uh, slow time in, the, in our existing systems. Um, but that doesn't really break our symmetric algorithms. It means that our key sizes have to be twice as big in order to have the same security. Um, hashes uh, would be the same thing, but our hash uh, functions are already twice as big uh, because of collisions, because in the collision cases, we have a, a root uh, in time anyway, so not really a whole lot of uh, hurt to our uh, symmetric and hash algorithms. Um, there are sets of algorithms that are quantum safe that we can do public key uh, operations with or thought to be quantum safe. Um, and we'll talk about the, uh, some of the issues with them. And when we need those algorithms, it depends on how long you want to secure your data. So if you want to secure data for 10 years, Make sure it's a symmetric key encrypted. <laughs> Don't use a public key uh, system because it will probably be broken by then. Um, okay. Well, because we're in this case where uh, uh, we're actually running up where we really needed uh, these post-quantum algorithms yesterday, uh, NIST has uh, uh, started a new contest, just like the uh, AES and the SHA-3 contests, looking for a uh, replacement. So, uh, uh, looking for proposals for replacements for our uh, public key algorithms. Uh, NIST announced this contest in uh, 2016. Um, the submission deadline was November uh, 2017, so all last year uh, they've been evaluating um, the uh, submissions. NIST got 87 submissions of which they, they continued, uh, considered 69 were properly formatted, that is had all the right um, uh, criteria met, physical cr criteria of you had your al uh, an algorithm, you had a 
implementation for the algorithm, you had all the right descriptions and documentation in, in place in order to be accepted. Of those 69, uh, five of them were broken and later withdrawn. Another four or five are broken, but the presenters have not, the teams have not withdrawn them yet. Um, uh, there was a conference in April uh, 2018 where everybody presented what their algorithms were. Um, there'll be a second workshop in, uh, in August of this year, uh, assuming the government shutdown didn't push that out. <laughs> um, and NIST plans to uh, call that list down to 20 or so algorithms. So we have 64, officially 64 algorithms still in the, in the contest. That should drop down to about 20. Seven of those 64 uh, don't fall into our traditional post-quantum algorithm uh, 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 systems that we talked about before. Um, and NIST is going to select more than one uh, algorithm for standardization. Um, they're looking at maybe three or four of the algorithms. And they're also saying when an algorithm drops out of their contest, it may come back in some future standardization. Um, uh, they're just trying to get, get it down so that we can really focus on just a couple of them and make sure that they're really secure. Okay, so most of the submissions were from uh, teams of people. Only six had a single person sub uh, submitting it. And two-thirds of the submissions had teams that uh, submitted uh, more than had people, members on their teams that submitted uh, more than one application. So there's people who, sub, uh, who were on several different teams. Um, and that was the more common case, not the least common case. Um, of those that only had people who were on their team on one algorithm, there were 26 um, submissions. 10 of those 26 uh, were, uh, were broken. So over uh, almost half of the ones where you are only on one team are broken. The other 43 had about four uh, broken. And then three of the unique, completely invented out of blue algorithms were broken immediately. So uh, when this um, um, presented this, they, what they're asking for is replacements for our signing, encryption, key encryption, and just regular data encryption algorithms. And they're looking for them in five different levels, which correspond to the current security of AES-128 through AES-256. Um, and they're ask, they ask the um, uh, presenters to concentrate on the first three levels. Um, the, uh, they're going to evaluate them on uh, how well they meet that security level. Uh, they're also going to evaluate them on how well they perform. Are they, can you do an operation in a, less than a day? <laughs> um, and in some, they have some other nebulous uh, uh, criteria like drop-in replacement. Um, can we take an existing uh, protocol and drop in this uh, algorithm without having to change the protocol? Uh, how strong are they against side channel attacks? As you saw Simo in his talk at RSA has some difficulty. The, the post-quantum stuffs are even more complicated and, and have more issues in that, that area. Um, perfect forward security, simplicity, etc. So here's the, uh, uh, the, the base uh, crypto systems that uh, I talked about three years ago. Um, most of the uh, pr presentation, or most of the algorithms fall in one of these. Um, in Hashbase, I talked about, last time I talked about um, how, um, uh, about sy uh, the Hashbase system, and one of the issues with Hashbase systems was you couldn't use the same key twice. Well, all the uh, ones in this standard are what's called stateless. What they've done is they extended the space of the, uh, the hashes, the number, of, the number of times you can sign, uh, up to the point where they've covered every possible signature for that size. And so they don't need to keep track uh, of how many uh, times you sign. Your, your signature determines which of the keys you're going to use, and then it gets used that, that one time. Um, one of the important parts of Hashbase is the Merkle tree. 
I only bring this up because it turns out other crypto systems uh, use this same thing. Um, it's a way of taking a very large key, compressing it down to a hash, and the cost is you make your signatures very large. Uh, here are the systems that uh, um, are proposed for crypto hash. There's only two uh, proposals. Um, most proposals have multiple flavors, and because there was only two, I was able to list all the flavors that were available. Um, as you can see, the public key sizes are pretty reasonable. Um, 32 bytes, 64 bytes, that's smaller than the uh, uh, RSA. But the signature sizes are in the order of 10,000 bytes. And, uh, and the uh, times can be uh, fairly long, up to half a second. Some of them are even over a second to, uh, to sign. Uh, so it's a kind of heavyweight in, in size of uh, signature and signing time, but there may be some uh, operations that, uh, um, that can uh, deal with that. Um, okay. Uh, code base. Code base is, use, uses uh, the notion of error correcting systems. So you have a noisy line, you want to be able to send your data through and not have to send it three times. You send your data through once with some extra stuff, the data gets corrupted, you're able to use the extra stuff to recover the data. Turns out you can turn this into a crypto system. You uh, take a matrix that, that puts that extra stuff into your data. Um, uh, and if you obscure that ma matrix so that uh, with, with some additional matrix, matrices, um, uh, people can't tell what the, the, the stuff that you put in in order to do the error correction is. Only you know what it is, and that's your private key. Um, and so you simply uh, encode uh, some data with that and run it, uh, make it noisy. You, you XOR some random data to it to simulate a, a noisy line and that's your ciphertext. And you decrypt it by uh, undoing the, uh, uh, the error correction and you get your data back. Um, this is a, uh, actually a very old system. Uh, first proposed in the 70s. Uh, we have lots of confidence in it because we've been trying to analyze it a lot. Unfortunately, the key sizes are fairly large, megabytes, or a megabyte. Um, uh, and when they've tried to reduce it, most of those have been broken. So the proposals are some ways of reducing the key size. One of the proposals is the original standard, the classic uh, Machilis. Uh, you can see it's got a one megabyte uh, uh, public key. Um, and it can be a bit expensive to do a key gen, almost a second. Um, but you can see others of them are in the order of uh, under 10,000 bytes. There's still thousands, thousands, of, uh, thousands of bytes, high thousands of bytes for your, your, your key sizes and thousands of bytes for your encoded key. Um, there are some that gets in the hundreds. Who knows if they're actually going to be secure and make it to the end. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, oh, and code base is only for encryption and key encryption. Uh, there were some proposals for doing code signing with code base. All of them turned out to be insecure. All of them were broken. So there are no code base signature algorithms that, that survived. Okay, Lattice. Um, I'm going to completely hand wave at Lattice because it's complicated. <laughs> um, there are uh, uh, two main categories of Lattice. There's the LWE and then the uh, RLWE NTRU systems. Um, the LWE is uh, provably secure. We have pretty good confidence in it. Uh, and, uh, that at least it's a, it's, it's a, we, we have confidence that it's secure as the uh, underlying hard problem that, that, uh, that it uh, tries to solve. The other systems, they haven't really patched out the proofs that much. Um, uh, but they get smaller key sizes. Lattice is the one that, that gets its closest to our uh, current system. So if you look at them, there were, this is by far the most common proposal. I did not include all the different variants of all the different uh, algorithms. I've only included their, their smallest ones um, on the list so I could fit them all here. Um, you can see that our key sizes are getting into under a thousand bytes. Um, 
And oh, by the way, the, whenever you see the, these lines here where it's in orange or yellowish here, those are uh, algorithms that are already broken. Um, okay. Um, there's, in, there's encryption and there's code signing. Uh, uh, and there's signing that can be done with Lattice. So it's a pretty uh, flexible system. Multivariant, um, since I'm running short on time, we're not going to talk about how it works. <laughs> Um, but we'll jump right to the key sizes. One of the interesting things on multivariance is um, um, this is another one of those algorithms that can uh, use Merkle trees to uh, compress the public key. So you can see we got fairly large pub public keys, orders of hundreds of thousands of bytes. Um, but some of these have really, really small public keys. But you'll see the key sizes are on the order of tens of thousands of bytes. So you can... If you have systems where you're going to generate the key and then sign, it's good to have, use the smaller key size because the, the, the sum of the two key, the sum of the public key and the uh, key size is smaller than it is for the other variants. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm going to turn this into a homework problem for you. <laughs> Mer Mersenne uh, is one of those systems that are um, uh, not based on the systems we have. It actually looks pretty secure. It's, it's cool. Uh, what's interesting is it's simple enough that you can go read the paper without a whole lot of math and understand how it's working. And the other important thing about it is the scheme that it's using is related to the scheme some of the smaller lattice systems are using. And so you can get an idea of how that scheme works without having to dive into all the details of lattice. Um, and underneath the covers, it's using error correction systems. Um, it can have a decryption error. Um, because the, the errors got, got too high. Um, same thing with Lattice. So if you see something with error correcting systems in it, a, a, a hash system with error correcting systems, it doesn't mean it's code based. It could be a Lattice based system or like this system. Um, so error correcting systems are becoming a new cryptographic primitive that we'll just have to deal with. Guess again. Um, guess again is um, a Interesting algorithm. Uh, I only bring it up because it was just completely off the wall bizarre. <laughs> um, basically, it uses probabilities. And the idea is you have a better than half probability of guessing something, um, um, but you're, the attacker only has a, a half probability of guessing this, this, the same thing. Um, the issue with this is um, it encrypts one bit in 2,000 times the size of whatever your, your uh, numbers are, which are fairly large. The other problem with this is a simple script broke this algorithm completely. <laughs> so, um, Psych. ECC has new life. Um, psych is ECC, but instead of using point multiplication, it uses mapping to different uh, isogenous uh, curves. Now, two curves are isogenous if they have a one-to-one -one mapping for the numbers. You have a set of numbers on one curve, a set of numbers on the other curve, and if they have a one-to-one -one mapping uh, between those numbers, they're isogenous. Um, the, uh, uh, and so instead of uh, curves, or instead of points, uh, the public keys are actually curves, and we send these curves around. Um, the uh, psych is more compute intensive than ECC and slightly more, uh, slightly uh, longer keys, but actually still pretty good. We're still under 1,000 bytes for, your, for our keys, but you can see the um, um, encryption and decryption times are uh, much higher than uh, some of these other algorithms uh, we're looking at. Uh, so ECC is back again. ECC is still part of crypto. <laughs> RSA. RSA is back again. Uh, not really. <laughs> um, uh, this is mostly a joke, <laughs> but it made it, into the, it made it into the first round of submission. And it's good to think about these types of things. The question is, um, can we make RSA big enough to make it safe from post-quantum? And the answer is yes, but it takes a gigabyte key, <laughs> four, big, four gigabyte private key, <laughs> It takes three and a half days to generate a key. 
20 minutes to uh, uh, verify a signature and two and a half hours to make a signature. So, uh, anyway, uh, so crypto, uh, quantum computers coming. We have alternatives. Um, we now have a good list of uh, uh, possible, possible replacements. That number is going to get s smaller in, in, in the next year. And uh, there's where you can go find more information about everything. So, any questions? Yes? There were any um, proposals with, with like a drop, drop in replacement with the system we have now? Um, the uh, lattice space um, uh, proposals are fairly close to drop in replacements, their sizes. Um, actually, the uh, Ijaz, I, isogenous ECC is pretty close to, to drop in. The only issue is the performance. Uh, the key sizes are bigger than uh, ECC, but smaller than RSA. So. Uh, yes, the, the ECC ones are, are very Diffie-Hellman, I'm sorry, are there any, the question was, are there any systems that are Diffie-Hellman-like? And the uh, isogenous ECC is very, very Diffie-Hellman-like. It, it, the whole math is exactly Diffie-Hellman, uh, the, the, the way the protocol is structured. So, yes? You, you have mentioned some uh, crypto systems with uh, 32-bit uh, keys. But any 32-bit keys, a system can be broken by... Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I should have mentioned it. I did not label those, those uh, slides. Those numbers are not bits. Those numbers are bytes. Mm -hmm. So when you see uh, 328 bytes, that's bigger than an RSA key. You multiply yeah, the bits by 30. So the 32 ones are actually hash, 256 bit hashes, is what they are. Yeah. Uh, the times are in milliseconds. The times are in milliseconds. So, so these are all still sub second. But if you see something like 1,000, it's over a second. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.